Ladies, gentlemen, we are in Toulouse at the Toulouse School of Economics with Jean Tiroz, the scientific leader of the school. Jean, you did uh, contribute to a special issue in the journal I am uh, chief editor and Paul Josco is the other editor, but it may be better to address the content of the issue, if you agree. Sure. Do you, do you like, are you satisfied with the current approach, said, pledge and review used to prepare the Paris conference on, on climate change? Do you like the, the way it comes? Well, I think economists more generally don't like the pledge and review approach. But why? Because it has a lot of flaws. The first is ah. that it doesn't try to measure uh, the, the pollution of the various countries. Oh, okay. So you, if you want to make countries accountable for their pollution, you have to have some measurement. Sure. Second, the promises are non-binding, so they are just promises. Yeah. And <laughs> we have seen in the past, from Kyoto to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. that actually the countries don't abide by their promises. Okay. Then there is no reason why we should have least cost abatement. So, you know, we'll spend 500 euros to economize on a ton of carbon in France and then some very cheap measures, yeah. uh, uh, policies that will cost five, five euros per ton are not used somewhere else. So all of that is actually a big drawback and I'm very concerned that the waiting game is going to go on. Okay. What, what is the waiting game? So the waiting game comes from the free riding that uh, goes with pollution. So when I use my car, or yes. I don't insulate my house or whatever, yes, yes. I emit CO2 or other gases, uh, greenhouse gases. And what's going to happen, of course, is that the consequence of these uh, greenhouse gases will be global warming. That's true. And the consequences of global warming will be borne not by, not by me, not by the French That's people, true. Or a very, very small fraction okay, by the French can. people, it will be borne by the other people. It's a bit similar to smoking in the 70s. We were smoking well, except like smoking crazy. hurts you a substantial amount. Of course, you have anxiety <laughs> on the <laughs> others. True. But That's in that true. case, you know, except if you are China, maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, most of the cost is actually borne by other countries and also by future generations who, are, who don't true. even vote. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. part of the, of the issue. And then if you put some effort into reducing uh, your pollution, it's not even sure it's going to have any impact. I do catch it. I do catch it. So what should be a strong policy if the policy we are in is not strong at international level? Well, and first we need to have measurement and okay. we have to develop, and it's not easy, we have to develop satellites which are going to measure the pollution of every uh, country so that you make countries accountable okay. for the pollution. Then we have to start speaking again about uh, carbon pricing because efficiency will require that carbon price will be the same in all countries right. of the world. Should you just give us a okay. hint of it? Because if the carbon price is not the same in different countries of the world or in different sectors, what's going to happen is that we will spend, as has been done, your know, five or ah. 500 or 1,000 euros yeah, to yeah. Uh, reduce carbon emission, yeah, yeah. whereas we could do the same with five euros okay. and uh, maybe 100 or 200 times yeah, yeah. more. So we could actually reduce much more pollution at the same cost. Sensible, it makes uh, sense. And so conversely, uh, yeah. price and price, and then we need enforcement, and that's uh. that's very difficult, <laughs> of course, because it's like with sovereign debt. Mm -hmm. uh, countries are sovereign, so if they mm -hmm. don't abide by what they promise. Uh, it's very difficult to force them. So we need to use the WTO. So if the yes. carbon price is not enforced in countries, you need uh, to have WTO sanctions. You know, what countries WTO? can... WTO? Because you can think of that as being a form of dumping. So if you okay. don't impose a carbon tax or a cap and trade mechanism okay. in your country, that means that basically the industry is subsidized and there's a good case actually to actually uh, have WTO yeah, sanction yeah. because it's, it's a form of, of dumping. Have you ever met Pascal Lamy, the former boss of WTO? Well, yes, but not, not to talk about that. But I think okay. the WTO uh, uh, actually is willing to listen to that argument because it's really a form of yeah. dumping. Well, that's good. But also, we don't really have many arguments in terms of uh, reducing, uh, you know, enforcing those agreements. I, I think yeah, yeah. it's very hard. You can use naming and shaming. You can use various things. Um, it's difficult. Okay. Uh, something else in the same um, in the same mode or tune. The content of a, of a good policy. 
Well, we have to think also about the burden sharing. Ah. So, hey, you know. I, I will even do that, <laughs> burden sharing. Burden sharing is actually a very important thing. So how do you deal with you know, equity, for example? Mm -hmm. So the emerging countries or the poor countries says, we would like to finance our growth. And if we put a carbon tax or cap and trade mechanism on us, then it's going to be more costly and it's unfair because uh, developed countries have finance tax growth through emissions which are free. And they have a point there. Unfortunately, there's another point, which is that the rich countries are not the ones who, on average, are going to suffer the most from climate change. That's true. So they are on the drivers, in the driver's seat because they can say, you know, if you yeah, are Russia, yeah, yeah or parts of America, or Canada, or Austria, or even Europe, you could say, well, you know, I don't care that much. You are the ones who are going to suffer most. So there's, there's ethics versus bargaining. And I think the, you know, the, the rich countries have to be more generous. The advocates of the poor countries don't have to be extremists, otherwise there won't be any agreement, and things will be even worse for the poor countries. Yeah, so, yeah. so the advocates of the poor countries should not be extremists. That's going, very, going to be very bad for the poor countries. But the rich countries have been have to be much more generous. That's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, as you have seen, the, this guy is a Nobel laureate. I didn't say not to fry on you, but he's a sensitive and, and sensible man. He's, he's thinking. What, 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 he, what he makes is to articulate all the issue together and, and to make it palatable, workable. And You should read the article he did write with Christian Gaulier, also from the Tool School, and the others, you have Siglis, you have Weizmann, you have Peter Crampton. All these articles are in free access. It's a real journal, it's my journal, it's Paul Joscao, in free access, a single link on internet. Jean, many thanks. Jean Michel, and thanks I so much. Thousands of people will download the article, think about it, and, and I hope you will do like Jean, you will push for a key solution at the global level. And I hope we will end up quite soon having this ideal single price at the world level. Thank you, Jean. Well, thank you for And all you do. Congrats for the conference we are just leaving.